Welcome and welcome, welcome. Oh boy, we've got some wild shows going on this week, and today is going to be like a, a very special episode. You don't want to miss it. We've got in our studio here Mercedes Sparks and Larry Sparks. So unusual that we have both of them because they, they actually have their own businesses. They do, but uh, they're both in the business of revival. And so today we're discussing the supernatural action and activity of God. And Larry uh, turned me on to Jesse and Parker Green. And the story, I'm going to give you the quick story because it could be an easily an episode just on, on the, what they did with the West Coast. But Larry, you tell the story uh, real quick that you just told me. She's an evangelical yeah. uh, Christian up in the Northeast, has yep, a vision been... of the West Coast yep. and baptizing people in the ocean, goes out there for two years and doesn't see a whole lot. She's got a megaphone or something? Megaphone preaching the gospel. She had a couple people get saved, and they were acting like it was revival because they had years where nobody was coming to Jesus. And they were really called to be evangelists to California. Uh, and then it was COVID 2020 where they were going to do some big event, and everything shut down. They couldn't use the facility. All the people who were supposed to come speak bailed. They were not able to come. So they went out and took it to the beaches, not knowing what would happen, except they would go out on the beach, her with the megaphone, somebody with an acoustic guitar, and thousands of people ended up showing up at the beach. And it brings us up to where the Los Angeles Times announced that they were in revival. And it's funny because Jesse would say, I didn't even know what a revivalist really was at the time, but apparently Los Angeles Times said we were in it. So that's kind of the origin story <laughs> of Jesse and Parker Green and their ministry called Saturate. All right. So, uh, Let's 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 see if we can get uh, Jesse right now. She's doing some meetings, but she stepped out to talk to us, and I want to make sure. Hey, Jesse. Hi. Good, good to, to see you. Lance. Welcome to the show today. So, um, <laughs> all right. So normally we would be talking to you about that whole journey from you know vision of uh, revival and everything, and the reason I'm not doing that is because you got a really cool book out on called Wildfire, a field guide to supernatural revival. You open up with uh, Randy Clark. And I was on Randy's board for years before oh, wow. I went into um, the media and seven mountains world. Uh, and, but um, so you've got, you've got this great feel for revival in its fresh form right now. But the part that fascinates me is the, you said you had a vision. Was it a vision or an impression of seven waves and with Roe v. Wade was happening, this caught my attention. It's really the second wave has to do with what's happening right now. So, so share yeah. with us about these seven waves that you talk about in your book. Yeah, so um, I've probably had only a handful of visions. I wouldn't say that I'm someone that has them every day. And uh, we were doing these beach revivals in 2020 in California, seeing thousands of people saved and healed. And then uh, the Lord told us to shut down the meetings, which was really hard to do. Um, obviously, when there's so many people coming and the momentum there and miracles. And September 18th, 2020, I was just praying. I go to sleep and at three o'clock in the morning, I wake up and it feels like, like the presence of God is in my room. And I see this vision. And the first one is a giant wave crashes into California, and then it spreads across the entire nation of America. And the Lord says, this is the wave that you're in right now. And he said, the first wave of revival is the separation of the wheat and tares. Mm -hmm. And he says, I'm raising up a remnant and I'm separating the wheat from the tares. And I was like, okay, like, I don't know what that means. And then before I could even like get a word in, all of a sudden a second wave crashes in. And the Lord was using language that I don't use at all. If anyone knows me, I don't talk this way. Um, but the Lord said the second wave is the resurrection of the unborn, repentance from Moloch, and that there was a rise of Esthers and the Esthers were not who we think. And that those Esthers would hold hands with Deborah's. Um, and then as the vision progressed, there was seven waves in total. And each wave signified a special outpouring that would bring both persecution as well as great harvest in America. And he said that this was going to happen over the next 10 years. And so I quickly wrote it down in a blog. I texted Larry. I just bullet pointed it in my book, Wildfires. 
but I'll be honest, Lance, like I didn't really dive into it because that second wave was so specific, what God was showing me all about the reversal of Roe v. Wade, the, the unborn getting their voice back, um, this rise of women speaking up that have been persecuted and silenced. And I just honestly thought I was like, you know, either that's going to happen or it's not. And I'm kind of nervous to put like all of my chips in the basket of that vision coming to pass. So I just wrote it down so it would be time stamp. But I kind of was like, okay, if that second vision comes to pass, then I know that the rest of it is going to happen and we're going to see a great revival sweep across America. Well, let's go to the third wave, man. We can't, uh, can't neglect this. This is too cool. <laughs> wave three, deliverance and okay. witchcraft prophetic showdown. Tell us what that mm. is. So the <laughs> wave three is the scariest one for me, to be honest. Um, cause what the Lord was showing me was, I don't know if, um, people watching this, if you've ever been to a coastline, but when a wave actually crash, it crashes to the shore, what happens is it doesn't just go away. The next wave actually absorbs that. So something that's really important here, Lance and Mercedes is that each wave is actually connected to the wave before it. Um, so the first wave that's separating the wheat and the tares. So with the second wave, of the resurrection of the unborn, I actually believe that that will be used again, this Roe v. Wade um, being turned upside down, that that's actually going to be used to con continue separating the wheat from the tares in mm -hmm. America and really raising that remnant in the nation. Now, that third wave is deliverance and witchcraft, which is a prophetic showdown so throughout the Old Testament, you see these stories of um, first kings. I was just reading this morning, this man of God, you know, he withers the hand of a king. You see Elijah falling down fire. And I believe that that third wave, we're going to see uncompromised, fiery prophets that will stand against the satanic temple, mm. stand against New Age and I believe, especially in media and entertainment, we're going to see huge displays of miraculous power from prophets that are not compromising, that don't care what culture thinks about them. And they're going to move in such signs and wonders that literally it's going to stumble witchcraft, satanic temple agendas. And all of this, again, is connected to everything that's happening with Roe v. Wade and the resurrection of the unborn. Hmm. Wow. So we got national repentance and hidden sins exposed nationally and in churches. Repent while you can. <laughs> yeah. So the scary thing I think people don't realize is signs and wonders, deliverance, healing, revival, harvest. Everyone gets very excited about these things. But the problem with these things is once you see a miracle, once you see God move, you're required to respond. So either you believe God or you don't, but you can't say any longer, I didn't know, I didn't, I wasn't aware. So the issue and the hmm. problem with revival in America is it's going to leave us with a point where we have no excuses anymore. And that will invade every area of culture. And so national repentance will actually happen where there will be a line in the sand. Every sin will be exposed in every single area of culture, but specifically in the churches. And we're already starting to see some of that. But when God starts to move in power in that way, what happens is people either need to repent or they just will be spit out of God's mouth and they will be lukewarm and they will no longer be able to like survive in the environment anymore as a lukewarm Christian. The culture will just feed them out. Yeah. You want to go to five? Anybody else? I mean, I'm, I'm having no, fun. No, I love it. I, I'm list. writing them down. I I've got the list. <laughs> Clean, wave five, cleaning up house, false prophets exposed, getting mm -hmm. the house in order. What do we got there? Yeah, so... This is, again, not like a huge fun one. People don't love these, but everyone <laughs> was like, give us the miracles. But the thing is, is that 
with massive harvest, um, there needs to be a place for that harvest to come. And so much of our church um, culture in America, I think we see it right now all over the place, is we've just settled and compromised in so many ways. We don't look like the body of Christ. And um, these fortune-telling prophets that are masquerading around our nation um, there's going to be a mass exposure with that. And I believe that when we see that third wave come, that prophetic showdown, again, there will be a rise of the counterfeit. And what's going to happen is the Lord is going to increase holiness in this nation, as well as just increase exposure. So I keep saying to people, like, if you have any compromise, any sin, just repent right now because God is getting his house in order mm. for this harvest. And the only way we're going to see the things that God has prophesied about through so many prophets, and he's just right now giving birth pains of this stuff, but he's not going to allow the church to be this kind of one foot in, one foot out, looking like culture, and then bringing in the harvest. So we've seen that. I, I hate to say it, but in a lot of mega churches, I think people have been surprised um, at the exposure that's taken place. And there's just, Lance, there's a lot more coming. People that a lot of people love and treasure, um, they have maybe made those people into idols, and God will expose all of that. That's so interesting. You know, while we're talking here, I remember doing a, a prophetic act on the mall. You want to really get out there and ride the, the gnarly edge of the wave, go to Washington, D.C. at the height of a political season where Jezebel and witchcraft is, where the Antifa and BLM are on the streets, and have a prayer rally. So we did a prayer worship rally on the mall. And uh, we were going to be indoors where it's safe at the Trump Hotel, but because of COVID, we had to go outside. So hmm. Mario Murillo and uh, Jeremiah Johnson both ministered. Two guys that I got to get back. I got to get in touch with Jeremiah. The uh, and what's interesting is I think Jeremiah got hit with a uh, who was it that had a the Bible. guy had the heckler uh, who was uh, shouting yeah. at him? Was it Jeremiah? Or was it Mario? I that think both was, of them had. It was Jeremiah. 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 Wasn't yeah. there somebody trying to interrupt Mario Murillo too? Same guy when Mario was preaching. Oh, one guy demonically manifesting with Jeremiah Johnson and Mario Murillo, mm -hmm. both uh, both of them. And and I thought right then I said. The spirits in Washington are manifesting against prof the prophet and the evangelist because mm. they're going to be rising up in the next stage in a powerful way. And I see prophets and evangelists coming to, into their own here. Talk about wave six, tearing down, exposing all idols, a great fire. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> so all of this is encouraging. If you can yes, yes, I'm edified. Yeah, because the thing is, people don't realize is it's it's really God bringing us into a place of consecration so that we can experience freedom, healing, deliverance, and the harvest we say that we want. Yeah. But the issue is people don't realize is there has been so much bramble and just garbage that we just have tolerated. And I just feel this burning in me. I, I'm just so fired up about it right now. And I love what you were saying about Washington, because Lance, I believe that places like San Francisco, Washington, D.C., New York, California, we're about to see war in those places. And I believe God's sending evangelists and prophets that are they like Mario Murillo, Jeremiah Johnson, Tommy Ariomi, people like this, where the culture cannot touch them. And there's going to be so much demonic manifestation, but in that sixth wave, a great fire, the exposure of idols, I don't think people realize that an idol is anything, anything that you have to check in with before you say yes to God. Hmm. And we have allowed so many idols to really be at the forefront of our lives. You know, so many people say to my husband, Parker, and I, you know, are you guys radical Christians? And I'm like, not according to history mm -hmm. or according to scripture. We're kind of like the most basic Christians you can be because we believe that if you preach the gospel, right. that you're a Christian, but we've become so lukewarm in mm -hmm. our faith. We don't know the word of God. We don't spend time in his presence. 
and we've made every single thing, financial blessing, um, promotion, self-idolatry, all of these things have become idols and the Lord is going to expose it. And that great fire is what Larry has been really burning with is that Pentecostal fire. But people don't realize, again, when Pentecost came in Acts, we see this, it caused this great repentance where people were like, what must we do? What must we do? Because you respond when the glory of God comes. And I believe that we're entering into those days right now, Lance. Well, your seventh wave here is uh, the recognition of Jesus as Lord, one nation under God. And then uh, the last chance, which is curious. So there's a one nation under God call, and really it's the last chance for what? For America or for, or for people to get right with God? Okay, so I'm going to say this, and I, I don't usually preach this, but I feel like just with everything that's been happening with Roe v. Wade um, being overturned, I really do believe it is the last chance for America. And I do say that with, like, with weight because it makes me like almost want to cry, but I really love this nation and I want it to be the nation that I grew up in um, and that I believe God has set apart for us to be able to influence the rest of the world, but we can only live in idolatry and rebellion for so long before God really does um, remove his favor and blessing. And I believe that he's allowing these seven waves of cleansing to come to saturate our nation and bring in harvest and bring in miracles and display his glory as a last chance for this nation. And I, you know, there's a lot of prophecies about civil wars and um, people moving to different states and what this is all going to look like. And I, I don't have absolute clarity on any of that, but I do know that God is moving in a way that's undeniable. I mean, we're even seeing it at our tent revivals where it's like you're either in or you're out, but you can no longer sit on the sidelines and just be a, a watcher and just be a consumer of Christianity anymore. Mm. It's like people are being healed and delivered all around you. And it's like you either believe it or you don't, but you have to make a decision. Mm. That's a uh... Larry, you know, you introduced this, uh, this chapter to me. So as, how does this fit within the great narrative of all the revival ministries that you're talking to and that you're, you're working with at Destiny? What I love is that what Jesse and Parker are doing is they're mobilizing everyday people to go out, preach the gospel, and carry the presence of God wherever they go. Show up in the marketplace, show up in your business, show up on a field. I think right now the word that the Lord put in my heart is we're going to see a synergy of two expressions of revival in the days ahead because Jonathan Edwards really spoke those revivals under Jonathan Edwards. They happen within the context of a church building often. But then you had Cane Ridge, which would happen in the field. You had the church building and you had the mm. field. And I believe what we're going to see in the days ahead is both the field and the church building, the Cane Ridge and Jonathan Edwards marrying together and seeing the power of God, as Jesse was talking about, saturate the church. But the key is who will make room for what God is doing and who will actually preach a gospel that is worthy of the signs and wonders that follow it. Um, one of the things she said, though, and Mercedes, you have been talking about this a lot lately, is deliverance and going back to that second wave with Roe v. Wade being overturned. And Lance, I've heard you share about a national deliverance, like on the day when Roe v. Wade was overturned. And I remember even at the 2000, uh, 2020 election, um, going back to 2016 or Kavanaugh or whatever, these significant moments in our nation, you almost see this spasmodic response response from people across the nation as if they are contorting, screaming, crying out the same way when a person is being set free of demonic torment or demonic possession, it's almost happening at a national level. So I found that so interesting. And I've known Jesse, I've read this book, we published it. I didn't realize that number three, wave three, that wave of deliverance was right there on the heels yeah, of Jesse, wave two. I want to ask you about this. So Larry was telling me about your encounter with deliverance 
<laughs> while you were water baptizing people, uh, explain. I didn't get a chance to ask him about that because we had to come right to the interview. What what was he talking about? <laughs> yeah. So honestly, I didn't really know much about deliverance going into everything that we've been doing. Um, I was kind of like a gospel preacher, like a through and through like evangelist. And that was my training and experience, like preach the gospel, get them into eternity in heaven. And God kept highlighting baptisms, 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 and baptize them now. Don't wait. So we baptize people with water bottles and pickup trucks. And what started to happen was we would pray for them to be baptized. We would say, you know, are you follower of Jesus? You want to give your life to Jesus, repent of your sins. And then what's happening in these baptisms is so different than anything I've ever seen. People would start to literally manifest in the water. We have videos, tons of videos I'll send you, Lance, of people screaming, like struggling to go into the water. And then they go in and we have people throwing up, being delivered of evil spirits, literally like, crazy stuff happening that I just had no paradigm for. I'm like buying every book I could find on deliverance. I'm calling Patricia King. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing, but the demons are just coming out. And what's happening is I think with these baptisms, it's so different. I think it is more like a mikvah um, in the Jewish tradition where it's cleansing people mm-hmm. of every demonic thing that's been inside of them as they decide to go all in and following Jesus. And literally, like we just last, a week and a half ago, we were in Houston and I did an altar call for women who had abortions to get set free from the spirit Mm. of death and spirit of shame. Mm. And these women started repenting and wailing out, getting baptized and literally convulging all over the parking lot getting full-blown deliverance. And it was just one of the craziest things I ever saw. There was like, looked like um, a murder scene. There's just bodies all over the parking lot in Houston. And I'm like, I have no grid for this, but I just know we need to train as many people as possible really mm. quickly. Wow. I end up thinking Lance and, and Jesse. I love deliverance ministry. I, Lord help me, I do. It's, just, it's I, gr- I grew up with it. Nobody wants it, but you know what? <laughs> miracles and deliverance go together. Jesus, that you know, Jesus talked about, uh, he said, no man who does a miracle lightly in my name will speak evil of me. And Jesus was talking about the disciples complaining that, Master, these men are casting out demons in your name, and we forbade them. Mm-hmm. Jesus likens deliverance to a miracle ministry. If you want to see healing and miracles, the A.A. Allens of this world and the Branhams of this world that see those notable miracles have notable deliverance anointings. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say that, wow. you know, so much of this, I think, is so old, it's new. Like, we haven't had it in so long, it's so old that it's new. And when you think about what they do in the book of Acts, that's exactly what they're doing. They preach the gospel, there's a sign and a wonder, people believe, they baptize them, they lay hands on them to receive the Holy Spirit just in that order. And I, I do like, I got to get a word in. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Larry, you got a bunch of preachers talking about revival. You guys got to jump in or you're not going to get any, any exactly. <laughs> I restrain myself from, from also making the joke and the, I got, I got something actually important to say, but when you're talking about people puking in these like baptismals and I was like, how'd you like to be the next person that has to go in and get baptized? Right. <laughs> that, that would be a lot. Um, okay. Mercedes level up. How do you want to be the person for three hours standing <laughs> oh, no. in the baptismals where people are losing their weaves and their throw up and it's just nasty. And I'm like, oh, Holy Spirit, please protect me from being <laughs> sick because this is like, if you want to be a humble minister, yeah. baptize people and do deliverance in the waters. Uh, it will humble you quicker than anything. <laughs> I think it's so, I think it's great though. I mean, it, 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 like I said, it's so old, it's new, but I want to point out two things that you said of, of where we're at right now with the, um, resurrection of the unborn, but then you talked about the Debras and the Esters. See, this is another thing I'm hearing a lot about is a women's movement that's coming is a Christian women's movement, um, that I think God's going to release. And then the next part, like Larry said, with the deliverance, I mean, I really see that coming. It's, and almost because, you know, like when you read, when you read about, um, Pharaoh and Moses and, you know, Pharaoh's, uh, 
uh, sorcerers and the witchcraft that they mm -hmm. do. It's not like there isn't intrinsic a certain amount of power that the devil can portray through sorcery or witchcraft. But when it encounters the authentic power, it encounters yeah. the power of God, right. you know, I mean, that's that type of showdown, like you're talking about on Mount Carmel, that I think our culture is desperate for. And that when you have people who are going to be so cleansed, so, and I love what you said too about, um, you know, like repent, repent now. And Lance, you talk about, I've heard you say that judge yourself, lest you be judged. And so we have a window, you have a time and you can judge yourself now, get right with God, tear down those idols. I mean, Hey, is it, it could be as simple as you're, you're watching TV and you're not reading the Bible. And honestly too, I mean, Jesse, you kind of said this, are you more tuned into what prophet so-and-so is saying, or what pastor so-and-so is saying right. versus what is the word of God saying to you right now? What is the fresh manna from heaven that the Lord has for you today? Like these, it's back to basics. You know, I feel like God's calling us back to basics and you're right. It's like, you seem radical when you do it. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to chime in. That's probably my one soundbite for this episode. Back to Larry and Lance. <laughs> well, to kind of follow up on that and then back to Lance, like Corey Russell, one of our friends, always defines revival this way. He says, revival is not out with the old and in with the new. It's out with the old and in with the even older, which is the Bible. So it is literally going back to what the Bible says. And Jesse, from studying church history, it's interesting when you, I hear about the manifestations happening in the baptismal waters, people being delivered or even baptized in the Holy Spirit, which you saw quite a bit of, you go back to the first 300 to 500 years of church history, there was an expectation that when somebody got water baptized, not only were they confirming their salvation, but they actually also got delivered of demons. They would often come right. up out of the waters speaking in tongues and mm. prophesying. There was a full work of God. And I almost think we've reduced our expectation of what's supposed to happen in water baptism. So you are, you are mm. a normal Christian. As our friend Sid Roth would say, you're normal as defined by the Bible. If you, if you believe that, if you believe that Sid Roth is normal, that's, that's, what it starts. <laughs> Let's, so that's he, questionable, I guess. Uh, <laughs> believe me. So, 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 um, Mishpocha, uh, he's my Jewish brother. I should say that those people, people are going to write and go, why don't you like Sid? Of course I like Sid. So he called me up. Here's how Jewish people are. He calls me up. He goes, I haven't heard from you. I was wondering, are you, are you offended with me? I go, no, I haven't heard from you. I thought you were offended with me. He goes, no. I go, okay, but it's probably somebody else. And we pick up where we left off and keep talking. I read Jeremiah. This is very interesting. Jeremiah, it bothers me. Uh, that the American charismatic community has to always have a happy ending. Yeah. Uh, everything we do, and I think we don't serve the next generation well, when we, we should wow. emphasize the joy and the excitement and the victory of the, uh, of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But we should also emphasize the fact that your job, your success is predicated upon whether or not Noah's success wasn't based on whether or not he convinced the world to repent. Mm -hmm. It was based on whether or not he had preached repentance and mm -hmm. built an ark. We're building right. a new house that is the church. Victory is all the stones and the bricks that we're adding to it that are those that will be saved. But I want to read to you something. Jeremiah predicts, this is the notes I have um, that is in the forward to in my Bible here. Jeremiah predicts the fall of Judah and 70 years captivity. He regards himself as a true spokesman of Yahweh against false prophets like Hananiah. So catch this. History this is where we're at. He's a true prophet, and there's false prophets. He claims they are not sent by God, even though they think themselves to be sincere. So they weren't in it for the money. They were sincerely delusional. They hate him fiercely <laughs> and bring pressure to bear on the political system to persecute him. They go to the wow. king to lock him up. Jeremiah records his personal history and all of those political and religious intrigues of his day. He loses politically, but he does win spiritually. Catch that line. Wow. He wow. feels his sense of aloneness, agonizes over the sins of the people, and the sure judgment to come. While he shrinks from his task, he is unable to remain silent. He speaks in parables, warns of apostasy, employs burning words of rebuke, contempt and doom, and beneath, beneath them lies the aching heart of the patriot, who senses that Israel's security cannot be divorced from faith in God and a right covenant relationship and obedience. 
I say a wow. lot of that is for the American Christian right now, the patriots who love America. And I'm going to say something. I just want to I'll throw this out for you younger, for you younger folks out there, including Larry <laughs> and Mercedes. Uh, and that is that the progressive fallen away Christian church, the woke church is easy to identify. But I want to warn you that when deliverance and national repentance mm. comes to America, yes. you're also going to see a lot of our crowd very uncomfortable with the tares and the wheat being separated in terms of America's destiny. There are many that don't want to go into nationalism because they feel it's unhealthy politicizing of the gospel. I'm going to tell you ahead of time, God is going to raise up Jeremiah prophets that will weep because God has a relationship with nations and he doesn't want this nation becoming a goat nation. He wants it to be a sheep nation. And if he has to shrink it, he'll shrink it, but it will go in to the millennium as a sheep nation mm. and not a goat nation. But even, even there will be persecution against those uh, ministries God uses that turn the nation to repentance because they will be in the political arena and in the business arena and in the government and in the media arena. And there's a lot of preachers that are going to find that a little too close to Babylon for their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. But Daniel was raised up in in Babylon, and he was the one that brought Cyrus into position by prayer. And Cyrus was the guy that basically Jeremiah and Isaiah prophesied would show up. So even though Jeremiah, wow. he warns them of apostasy, but he gives them hope because he sees that God will send a deliverer from an unlikely source. But I'm just saying this to you guys because there's going to be a moment coming soon of deliverance, further shaking, the call for national repentance, and maybe even controversy in the house of God over mm. what does political engagement look like for prophetic people? Yeah, I dare say it's going to be more. I mean, it's, it's kind of a bold yeah. statement to say that, but I think that it's easier. I mean, I think biblical precedent would be it's easier to win witches, sorcerers to the Lord through signs and wonders than it is to convert the religious crowd of the day. Mm. That, that's, a, that's true, Larry. As a scholar of revival, you know the previous waves have a nasty singular consistency in persecuting the next wave. That's true. That's very as true. those waves come in, yeah, yeah, uh, those that ride it, sometimes that's as far as they'll go. And then when the next wave comes, they say that's it. Mm -hmm. And they push back on the next wave. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I think Jesse needs like some branding with like wave riders or something like that. She's got seven <laughs> waves. She's kind of like a California yeah, yeah. vibe. Put, I want you to write a blog called End Time Wave Riders. <laughs> there you go. I guarantee I got a knack that's for funny. this. End What's Time Wave funny Riders. Too, though, what you're saying before, I think there really is a key there, though, that people are not really recognizing. And I, I do like that you touched on this, Lance, because um, the last six months or so, the Lord has been telling my husband and I, he says, you know, I've called you to be missionaries in America and to raise up and train missionaries for the sake of America. And so you can ask Larry, like, my next book that I'm working on, it's for America. I like bleed America. And honestly, it's controversial. And what's so sad is it's almost like if I'm from, if I was from Egypt or from China or from the Philippines, I could love my nation and pray for my nation. Mm -hmm. If I was from Australia, but for me to say that I'm from America and I bleed for this country and I weep for this country and I'm nervous about the future of this nation because of its rebellion. And I want us to repent so we can have the favor of the Lord. That becomes controversial. And um, we even last week announced that we were um, getting lands to build a training center to raise up people that would basically fight on behalf of this nation. And it's so funny because we get barely any hate mail when it comes to salvations or altar calls. But when you say that you want to raise up people that will stand and be firebrand revivalists for the sake of America, all of a sudden my inbox is flooded with people. How dare you? All of this stuff. And now mm. the Roe v. Wade thing has just leveled things up mm. where I've been sharing with people, but I'm like, what an amazing discernment opportunity 
for our nation, where if you're wondering if your your church is compromised, if you're wondering if your pastor is lukewarm, well, if we're sitting on the fence and becoming professional fence riders when it comes to life in the womb being protected or not, again, that's the Lord exposing the idols of wanting to be like culture and not transform it. And the Lord is just clearing that stuff out. Mm -hmm. And so again, I, I, I love what you're saying about the deliverance piece. And I, I just think this, this shaking that's coming, it is going to be more intense and while we were seeing thousands baptized on the beach, the Lord said, you ain't seen nothing yet. Mm. And I believe that that was connected both to the harvest, but also we were surrounded by police trucks and getting citations for sharing the gospel. And I believe when God said, you ain't seen nothing yet, it's both in the persecution and also churches. Like, I, I, I know you said this, Lance, and I love that you said it because I think in the charismatic stream, you know, right now everyone's all on the same page, but the, God kept saying to me, he said, do not believe the illusion of unity. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this illusion that we're all singing kumbaya together with glory clouds until, you know, the presence of God fills us until we're all swept into heaven. I think that that is going to, what's going to actually really ruin people in these days ahead when they find out that people that they've maybe been idolizing are actually false prophets. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I remember this one. Here's a little bit of a uh, biblical uh, history here. You have uh, Abiathar and Zadok as priests of David. And when uh, he has the rebellion of um, Adonijah, uh, I believe it was Jonah, his firstborn son, tried to take his throne away from Solomon, right? Uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, uh, let, me go, let me go back a step. Adonijah had that rebellion, but before that was Absalom. And when Absalom mm -hmm. rebelled, if I remember correctly, uh, Larry, it was the prophets Abimelech and, um, and Zadok both were uh, faithful mm. to, uh, to, to David. But when Adonijah rebelled, I think it was Abimelech sided with Adonijah and Zadok stayed faithful. And what that means is that just because we're right on wave one or wave two doesn't remove the fear of the Lord that we could be fighting God on wave three. Mm. Absolutely. I'm telling you, there's an anointing on this message. That, you know, we have a tendency to all flatter ourselves that, well, I would never do this, I'd never do that. And Jesus even warned people. He said, you said, you know, you would never do that. Yeah, well, you're saying, by saying so, you're, assign, you're aligning yourself with the Pharisees because you're the children of them. So right. we have to, the fear of the Lord means we have to be, we're being qualified with every new wave that comes in. And we got to make mm. sure the idols in our heart don't, don't so covet s stability and tranquility in the church when God is stirring up a controversy, because if your idol is, is your church, God will break your idol. He's building a kingdom that can't be shaken, not a church that can't be shaken. Mm. So good. That is so good. I really, I really feel like there is a strong anointing on that. And that's funny because this morning the Lord brought me into first Kings and I was just studying about the rise and falls of the different Kings. And so I, I definitely feel like what you're saying is completely, um, honestly, it's a prophetic warning. And I think people don't realize like prophetic words are not just to direct us on how to be favored. It's sometimes, yes, but uh, honestly, God uses prophets and visions like the seven waves vision for all of us, the bride, to actually not be taken out by what's going to happen. Mm. And so again, it's like, I feel this urgency with the seven waves thing. And I told Larry, you know, I was supposed to write this earlier and I delayed it because we were doing revival events. And then I told him, I feel this urgency because it's coming at me and we just need to know how to prepare and engage with what's happening. And now with the Roe v. Wade thing, again, I'm, I feel this urgency. I can't even explain it. I like want to shout it from the rooftops, but I'm like, don't miss this moment. If you're a Christian in America, 
Do not miss this moment in history to actually stand on the right side of history and actually now push forward because for the sake of our nation, these are the opportunities where if we miss them or we say, you know, I don't want to engage in this battle or I'm going to just pastor the people in my church, you're like, you're missing the point. This isn't about you. This isn't about the congregation. This is about the sake of a nation. And we can miss this Kairos window if we're like trying to play it safe in these days. Well, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. And it was, uh, it was Joseph uh, Z is his name. He's a young prophet guy. And he says, I was reading, a, I was looking at a video of his on, on uh, Sunday before I went to church. And he said, notice, not, uh, notice that after this great victory, how many churches will be silent about it? And I thought that was a strange word because I hadn't thought about it one way or the other. But I noticed then, I got reports of significant, the larger the church, I mm. think the more political yes. they are. And here's the weird thing. 100%. They say they're not going to get involved with politics. But in fact, they are getting involved with politics because by making a decision not to talk about controversial issues, they're political. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes. And so the silence of the church on issues such as who is still not talking about that tells you they're sincere and they're sincerely off trajectory and they're not likely to correct their course as we're moving into more and more controversial waters. They're going to end up persecuting the next move of God. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Well, on that cheery note, people, <laughs> hey, hey, listen, uh, but, but the truth is God has a move. So Jeremiah says, uh, the prophet says, uh, let me, I had it over here a second ago. Let me read it to you again because I was, I feel as though this is our theme song. Behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you this day over nations and kingdoms. That's powerful yes. because kingdoms is the demonic realm and the angelic realm and nations is the jurisdiction over which they influence. And God is saying, wow. I've anointed you as a prophet when my words are in your mouth, it'll activate the angelic hierarchies to dispossess principalities and powers. And when they manifest, there will be things on the earth that are plucked up, broken down, destroyed and overthrown. And I'll do that in order to build and to plant. I think most people would love to build and plant without having to overthrow. <laughs> But, uh, Absolutely. but if you'll see the sequence, the waves early lead to the building and the planting. And so how can they get a hold of your book, Jesse Green, Revivalist of the Lord? Wildfire. <laughs> how do they get your book? Um, you can get it at jessegreen.com or on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. Um, wherever and then books we are do sold. revival events, so you can get them there as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, listen, we're going to talk to you uh, after this broadcast and set up a way that we could help you with your book, because we are the Oprah Winfrey of best-selling books. I've, we've helped more people. Mario Morello will tell you, we've helped more people sell thousands of books, because my audience is, a, is an intelligent, motivated, powerful group. They rode the wave with me from Periscope discovering Donald Trump back in the day to, uh, to where I am today. And they recognize that God is on the front lines of the culture war in seven mountains, and he wants a glorious apostolic church. And I thank God for people like you and like Larry and Mercedes, that the next generation is getting it. And I want to commit mm -hmm. myself and my generation to stand behind you hopefully not too far behind you so that we're not relevant, but behind you. <laughs> All right, we'll be back again with another, with another uh, uh, broadcast after this uh, tomorrow, but I, I, I don't know what could be better than this. This has been fantastic. And we're going to have Jesse back again because I just got the book and I still got to read it and I'm already loving it. See you all tomorrow. If you enjoyed hearing from Jesse Green today, you can grab her new book at lancewallnow.com forward slash wildfires. See you tomorrow.